Recently, I've been really curious about experimenting with adding other mediums to watercolor. In this video, I'll share with you how I use colored pencil to add definition to an otherwise loose watercolor of this red rowboat. The reference photo is linked for you below the video in case you want to paint along with me. And the video that you're gonna see me sharing here is actually an excerpt from a series of paintings I did with the Paint With Me membership community to explore adding colored pencil to our watercolors. You can find out more about the membership community in the description box below. And if you're just looking for some free monthly photo inspiration, you can find a link to my free monthly challenge below as well. All right, so now that's out of the way, let's get started. So we're starting with a really nice light yellow at the top. So I'm gonna take a little bit of Naples yellow and then just start here kind of with a light wash. And then I'm gonna move down and then just let it get a little bit darker as I move down here. It's going to be really abstract, kind of the colors that are happening here. Um, and then I'm gonna move down to mixing it into a green. And then I'm not really painting grass, I'm just painting color right now. And then um, it'll kind of move down all the way here to more green and less yellow. We're gonna paint around the boat and the, some of these elements here that I drew in my sketch. As you can see, it's kind of turned out to be more of a gradient. Just kind of go up and down here with my brush to fill it in. And then, um, you know, down here, it's gonna be a little bit, we're gonna wanna blend that into the water. But while I'm here, I'm just gonna start to put in just a little bit of, just kind of texturing. Take some green, some brown, like kind of whatever's on my palette. And I'm just gonna put in just these marks for grass. It's not exact. I just want there to be some texture in here. And I think what might be nice here is to actually do some splattering. So I'm going to take some of this color that I have on my palette. I'm going to cover up this um, part of the painting. Just gonna cover up this part with a piece of paper I have here and this part because I don't want to get it there and then I'm just gonna take whatever colors I have here on my palette I might get some more concentrated olive and a little bit of, of this ochre and then I'm gonna splash here So that's good. So I just want a little bit of texture there. And then I'm gonna move down to the water. So what I'm gonna do first here is actually wet all of the water. Around the boat. All the way down to the bottom. And then I'm going to paint really imperfectly this reflection. So we've got the sum of the same color and all I'm gonna do is pull it down into the water like this. Just watch for how far it goes. It's gonna go past the bottom of this boat like where it hits the water. Um, down here, just to start, we'll start there. We want it to be fuzzy, really, because it's a reflection. Okay, 
And while this is drying a little bit, what I'm gonna do is move to the blue. So I'll just take ultramarine and do a really kind of diluted version of it. I have cerulean also in my palette, so I might use a little bit of that. And then I'm just gonna come over here and then start to, I think I'll start at the, actually at the bottom and I'm going to pull some of this color up. It, you can even put a little bit of green into it um, if you want to. I'm gonna just go, I know there are clouds, I know there are clouds in here, but I'm going to just brush from the bottom up, tilt my paper perhaps this way, let it run down towards here. There's a very sharp reflection in the water of the boat, but what I'm gonna do is interpret it as if it wasn't a sharp reflection. Um, I'm gonna interpret it as if it's kind of blurry and you can't really see what's going on. So um, I'm just gonna kind of do blue up to maybe here. And then this is gonna dry a little bit and then I can probably pick up and lift out a little bit of the of the clouds and perhaps just using a, um, a, a piece of towel because that'll be easiest. So um, while this is sort of drying up a little bit, I'm gonna start to kind of maybe pick up a little bit. I want to do it while it's wet and that's because I want the colors to kind of go back in. I don't want a hard edged, I don't want it to be hard edged reflection. I want it to be really soft. So I'm just gonna just kind of oh, just a little bit just like that. It's not not gonna be very much again not also not very uh, precise. If you look at the reference photo it's not precise at all. I'm just roughly doing them. You can use your finger to just smudge it a little bit if anything looks a little bit too perfect or too hard. Okay, so um, now I'm going to actually go back and fix some of what's going on here. So I'm going to have a little bit more of the greens I'm gonna kind of put this back in here. Some of this cauliflower is okay. I kind of don't mind it. These little loose sketches. So I'm gonna put this here. We're gonna come back with color pencil over this part, which is why, you know, to me it's okay. Even in the in the reflections we could. But for now I'm just gonna leave it like that. And then over here I'm gonna to start to work on the red reflection. So it's red, it's like tinted red. So I'm gonna put, you know, if you really squint, it's like a burnt sienna color. Um, so I'm gonna take burnt sienna, mix it in with this ochre, and then mix in some of the red. I'm gonna use pyrrole scarlet because that's gonna be the base. Um, that's gonna be the color of the bow itself. So I'm just gonna mix that in to what I have on my palette. So it's like greenish red, brown. Um, so it's kind of part of the same family and then I'm going to start over here and then put in the base of this boat and you're gonna see it start to feather out and like I said if you look at the reference photo it's a very crisp mirrored detail of reflection it's like a mirrored reflection but I don't really want it to be a mirrored reflection I want it to be I do want it to be soft and fuzzy so I'm just going to not paint it that way. Paint it when it's wet. So we'll do this. Okay. Doing an inter interpretation of what's going on. I'm gonna take a little bit of green and then put it out over here because there are some Maybe some grasses sticking out over the top. And then I might just put in um, a couple of shapes over here. Like it's like bluish, grayish. I don't know, there's just, you know, there's this piece up here, maybe a piece here, a mark there. I don't want it to be really obvious. I think I could, if I wanted to come back and do them in um, kind of just define it in pencil later, but I can clean up some of these kind of flowy edges if they're a little bit too kind of escaping all over the place. 
I'm going to take my flat brush and then start to put in um, the like disturbance of the water. So if you can look here, there's like a little bit of sort of disturbance over here in the water. So I'm just going to take a damp brush and then start to rub it back and forth. It'll do a little bit of lifting. Just a little bit, and then you can even do it over here. There's some I can see here. A reference photo. So we're just using the reference photo as a point of reference where we can add in a little bit of that. We can even just, you know, put it where it's not happening because we're not following the reference photo when it comes to the um, reflection either. It's, you know, it's a lot fuzzier than it's showing in the reference photo. So <clears throat> that's where I'm going to leave this one. I might, you know, just fix this up a little bit knowing I'm going to come back and cover it with some colored pencil later. Um, but I think this is pretty good. I feel like I could darken, maybe darken around with this, around the base of where the grass meets the water. Just a little bit. And then use the ochre and then come up and then just do a couple of maybe marks here. Again, knowing that I'm gonna come back with colored pencil. So that's good. And then I'm gonna paint in the boat. So I'm gonna use Pyrrol Scarlet and I'll probably mix it into here. I don't wanna be stark red, like straight out of the tube. So I'm gonna mix it into there. And then I'm going to paint in just these hard details here. It's going to be very imperfect and then we'll see if I need to. It's going to start bleeding a little bit too. It's okay. And then we'll do this and then this. Keep it loose and really imperfect again. And I'm gonna just put in a couple of, maybe gr a gray wash over this. Do this like a grayish, buff titanium type of color. Um, and then put that on the inside of the boat. And then a little bit of maybe ochre, the oars. See how loose this is. Okay, a little bit too wet here, so I'm gonna soak up some of this. And this is gonna be an exercise in going back with colored pencil and then adding in all of this detail. So I'm gonna dry this and then come back. So this is where we're at with the uh, painting part and now we can do colored pencil over it. You can see I have bleeding, it's kinda messy and I really think that that's um, honestly, a wonderful exercise personally for me. Um, maybe it makes you feel uncomfortable, but maybe that's also a good thing. So I'm going to start with the boat. And um, I think the boat will help dictate how much then um, detail I want to put in the back. So I'm going to come in and just look at these little details and start to add them in. There's like a little red spot that peeks over. There's like a white detail that actually comes across, which I don't know if this is going to work this white pencil, but I'll try and see how it goes. I don't also want this to be super realistic, so it's really okay to me that it's not really totally correct. Um, I am going to sharpen my pencil a little bit because it's dull. Okay, so I'm gonna come in and then get these sort of hard edge details for the boat and then just define this line here. See how there's it's like a nice sharp line here that I made not very sharp when I was painting. 
and I can always come back and kind of fix it up with, um, I don't know, like white gouache, I guess, because I can see I colored into here, but the boat's actually white up here. Maybe I'll fix it with white gouache. And see how there's these, these like lines and shadow details, these details on the boat that I can actually put in with pencil in kind of a fun way. I'm gonna go like this, start to notice some of these details. You know, it's kind of lighter down here. I could use even use white, like this. I'm gonna put in a little bit of that detail. Um, this part is, you know, it kind of comes across, there's shading, there's actually a lot of interesting things happening here. But if I wanna put something in that's maybe just um, adding detail, but not too much, I can put in like shadow lines. Um, and then I can maybe shade this part a little bit. You know, there's writing on this boat, probably not gonna put that on there. Um, but just some of this extra small detail that happens down here might be fun to put in. Okay, so then that helps, you know, define the boat a little bit. And then even at the base of the boat where it meets the water, I can take like a darker color and then um, just kind of start to color it in a little bit. And then just give ground it just a bit. Just where it meets the water. See, I'm just adding texture like that, but then fading it out as I go. Um, and then I'm gonna take like an ochre, and kind of define some of, you know, the stuff that's going on in the boat a little bit. You can see an oar back here, right there. And I'm trying, really trying not to be very specific about what I'm sketching. Um, so, you know, if there's just a little bit of a shadow happening I'll just put a mark if there's like a dark area here I'll do that maybe a couple lines I'm not getting into the details um, there's you know little blue spots like a blue area here I'm just gonna put that in maybe up here too there's something peeking through and then there's a yellow Life ring. I'll just make some yellow there. So it's just, you know, here and there, there's a couple of things happening. So I'm just going to, you know, um, put them in with pencil, just kind of sketchy. Okay, now I'm going to go back and just define some of what's got going on in the grass. And so I'll just take a darker pencil color, perhaps just add a little bit of detail sort of around the boat, just immediately what's around the boat, um, even into the water. You know, there's like a little bit of overflow that happened um, from the red, maybe I want to try and erase a little bit of that. Maybe I can just by covering it up with a little bit of color, just smoothing it out. What's nice is if you don't color too dark, some of these areas, you know, that we lifted for um, for the grass that's reflecting in the water and it's not going to get covered up. So it's nice because we can you know, add something there without it being um, disappearing completely. So just gonna do just a little bit of just darker details just along here and then start to fade them out, I think, because I want to concentrate them just around this area. So just some darker green. Some yellow. 
even just some basic shading everywhere. It's kind of a nice way to add texture. And I think that really the last thing it needs is probably just a little bit of definition right there. Just as I look at this. So maybe I will spend a little bit of time just shading in this section. Giving the boat a little bit more attention. And I think maybe that'll help. Or maybe it won't, and that's okay too, but then we'll learn something from it. Go back and do a little bit more. I'm going to come back in with a little bit of white gouache and just recapture some of these parts. I think this little, you know, something like this detail might help. And I also realized I want to put in the green that happens right in between right here. It shouldn't be white, it should be dark. And then I think what might be nice is, it said I wasn't gonna do lettering on here, but I think it's gonna add a little bit of detail to add to um, this boat, which is interesting now that I'm looking at it. So maybe I'm just gonna put a few marks here that's gonna indicate that there's writing, but I'm not gonna actually write all the letters. That makes sense. Just putting a little kind of marks. So I think as an overall sketch, this is looking pretty good. Um, I probably could stop now. I think I might, I don't know why I feel like this, but sometimes this is what happens is you do these things and you feel like it's still missing something. And so I feel like it just needs some darkness for some reason around here. So I'm just gonna come back in and just add a bit more just shading is what it is. I'm going to take this color and then maybe just darken some of these details just in this area. Um, and maybe even just bring it out to here. I think there's this white that's maybe not captured so well here. Maybe cut that piece off so you can kind of feel like there's detail out there. These little things. Um, I think this is this is okay. I think for an exercise, let's call it that. I feel feel like for an exercise, this is good. I'm going to add just a couple of little more marks out here. I feel like you know, maybe needs another level of information. So you just add a little bit of just kind of texture marks over here. Plus there's that little dark spot that I wanted to cover up. Another thing we can do here is just use watercolor. Like watercolor, um, kind of put in of lines and strokes so coming in after the fact you can use like a little just to add these kinds of marks in so we want more kind of grassy marks but not in color pencil so we're just kind of working back and forth which I think is a nice thing to do too I'm 
I'm just using um, like a little cat's oops, like a little oops, like a little cat's tongue to put in these little just kind of marks here and there. I think that's nice. Okay, I'm feeling better about this. So this is where I'm going to stop on this one. I, I'm feeling pretty good about this as a kind of a quick sketchbook sketch. Um, and I think I might just leave it like this. Um, it, this might be nice to be outlined in blue like I did last time. So I'll do that really quick. And then I'm just going to call it to be done. I'm going to use this blue color for that. All right, so I'm gonna call this done and I hope you had fun with it. And again, I always say this, but remember to have fun. Remember to experiment and listen to the voice in your head that leads you along as you're painting. Sometimes your painting asks for more in a certain spot and don't be afraid to go there and give it a try and experiment, especially if we're doing it in a sketchbook. I hope you enjoyed this video and perhaps got some inspiration for mixing colored pencils with your watercolor. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.